Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 3 In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the Faro submachine gun, and please do be patient with me. I'm going to try to call it the Faro throughout this entire episode, but I am very likely to screw it up and call it the Faro. I know it's not a Faro. A Faro is a, an Egyptian ruler, which most of you probably associate with this actor, the Faro that famously battled Moses in the Bible and all that sort of stuff, but a Faro is a ruler, and a Faro is a submachine gun. going to try to keep that straight, but the Faro SMG is an excellent submachine gun. I feel like I've been saying this almost every week on In-Depth, but the SMGs in Black Ops 3 are very, very, very well balanced. Each one of them is good at something, and the Faro is just quite good in general. I feel like the Faro might well be the very best SMG in the game at all things, at all ranges. It's probably going to be one of my go-to weapons at the end of reviewing all of these SMGs, but let's jump into the stats and talk about why it's so good. It has the best in-class damage of all of the submachine guns, even better than the Razorback. It deals 30 35 damage up close, it'll drop off to 30, then to 23, and then decrease down to 19 all the way at maximum range, and the DPS is generally among the highest at all ranges. What this means is that it can kill between 3 and 6 shots, but it's usually a 4 shot to kill. I would like to point out that this, if I'm not mistaken, is the only other SMG that can kill in 3 shots except for the CUDA, so that's very important. However, the 3 shot kill range isn't super great, so most of the time you're going to need to kill in 4 shots. How convenient for you? though it's a burst weapon so that means that you're normally killing in one burst but let's take a look at these ranges the three shot kill range is approximately six meters which is better than that of the CUDA it outclasses the CUDA and three shot kill range it'll outclass it in rate of fire too but we'll talk about that later on and the four shot kill range is 19 meters unfortunately the four shot kill range isn't like super spectacular there are better weapons than that but it has a very nice rate of fire so it'll more than compensate for that slightly lacking four shot kill range. The headshot multiplier is 1.1x, meaning you'll deal 10% bonus damage for headshots, and if you remember that damage profile, these numbers are very, very specific and a little bit different. The headshots are going to be useful at medium and long range. They're not going to be useful at close range, unfortunately, but medium and long range, you can definitely kill people much, much faster with headshots, and I find that for some reason with the Pharaoh, it is very easy to get headshots. I think it's just that it's a very accurate weapon, or that it only has a tiny bit of vertical recoil, so if I aim kind of at the upper chest, kind of like at the clavicles or the neck, er, neck era, I am very area, I am very, very likely to get a headshot with my last shot and drop somebody in what should be a five or six shot kill range with one burst, and it's very, very good at doing that. Rate of fire is a little bit tricky because it's a burst weapon. We're going to need to talk about the rate of the fire of the burst and the burst delay, and then we can do overall rates of fire and other things. But the burst rate of fire, or how fast your bullets are coming out of the barrel just per burst, is 900 rounds per minute. This is the same as the VMP, and it's very fast. 900 rounds per minute is especially fast for a three-shot kill weapon, so it can kill very, very quickly up close. It's kind of like the VMP with bonus damage. The burst delay is 100 milliseconds seconds, meaning that there is 100 milliseconds between your four round bursts, and to put that into some kind of perspective, it's half that of the M8A7. The M8A7 has a 200 millisecond burst delay, the XR2 has a 167 millisecond burst delay, so it's faster than the XR2 as well, and if I'm not mistaken, 100 milliseconds is among the faster bursting weapons in pretty much any Call of Duty game, so that's very, very good. Also, a quick tip for Black Ops 3, you can do this on both a Faro or any burst fire weapon, is that you can hold down the fire button to automatically burst it at maximum speed. You no longer have to do the timing thing or work on your trigger finger or guess how fast it should or shouldn't be bursting. You can just hold down the trigger uh, to the whatever your fire button is and it's going to go ahead and burst at max speed on its own. Timing might be a little bit more difficult if you're not doing it manually, but it is very, very effective. There are a few questions about rapid fire on the Pharaoh that I would like to point out that work very, very differently compared to other weapons. Rapid fire in Black Ops 3 has special modifiers to where it changes the delay delay in your burst and not necessarily the actual speed of the burst. So if you want to run rapid fire on the Pharaoh, what you're actually doing is decreasing your burst delay. Now I haven't measured this yet, I've got the stats and the math, but I haven't seen exactly how it performs in game. Overall I have found it largely unnecessary because it bursts plenty fast for me. 
Now that we've talked about all of these things, let's talk about Time to Kill. It has the fastest up close Time to Kill in Black Ops 3, even faster than the Vesper because it has a three shot range, faster than the CUDA, very, very nasty up close, and it has an overall fast Time to Kill at all ranges. I believe the Razorback outdoes it at very, very long ranges. I think it beats almost everything else at very long ranges. And uh, it has a slight weakness at medium range where I think some weapons like the CUDA can slightly outdo it, but it is very competitive time to kill at just about every single range in the game. Magazine size is 40, which is very good. That's bigger than normal or 10 complete bursts, which you will very rarely need. Extended mags, you can bump that up to 56, but I don't find it to be particularly useful. useful. You can do that if you want to. It has good iron sights, but I still prefer to use the optics, and this is kind of conflicting for me because the iron sights on the Pharaoh are very, very good. I'm sure that most of you can use that. When I watch competitive players, the vast majority of the competitive guys were running the iron sights on this weapon. I don't have a problem using them, but I feel like I'm better with optical attachments. When I run optical attachments, I feel like I'm more accurate. I'm more on target. I am performing better, so I do prefer to run optical attachments. Recoil is very low, perhaps the lowest in the SMG class, maybe kind of tied with the Razorback. The burst does wobble a little bit. Unfortunately, it's not a dead-on burst like the XR2 or M887. It does wobble a little bit side to side, and it causes the habit to some kind of inconsistency consistency to it. Sometimes, some games, some bursts, I feel like I am dead on, like I am a god with this gun, and I am just nailing people and just dropping them burst after burst, and sometimes I'll miss one of the four shots I need to kill, and then I have to wait for the next burst, and it kills really slow, so sometimes it does have a very inconsistent feeling. It has a good hip fire spread, same as the other submachine guns. All the SMGs in the game have a good hip fire spread, nothing really special here, and I would like to point out that typically people avoid hip firing with burst fire weapons. I would tell you, don't even worry about that on the Pharaoh. It'll work very, very well. Hip fire. Just go down, go ahead and hold down your trigger. It'll be perfectly fine. Aim down sights time is 200 milliseconds, which is average for the class. Nothing really special or unique about that, but I do prefer the quick draw grip. I really like to be able to snap to ADS so that I can get my burst on target and kill people very, very quickly. So quick draw grip is highly preferred on this weapon. Reload time is 2.1 seconds, which is approximately average for the submachine gun class. You will be reloading a little bit because I do have a tendency to spam with this weapon. I, I kind of spam burst with it instead of being as accurate as I should be. If you want to run fast mags on it, you can drop that down to about 1.4 seconds. It's not such a big deal. It has a medium wall penetration factor, making it very easy to wall bang with. I have no problems doing it. I don't go with it too often because I'm just kind of in that COD routine where I feel like I can't with some machine guns, but you definitely can with a Pharaoh. Now, we've done all the stats on this weapon. It's time for me to talk about how I feel with it, how you should be using it, and recommend some classes. I feel like the Pharaoh is how a burst fire SMG should be. It is infinitely better than the Chicom or the AMR9. The Chicom was unfortunately not a very good submachine gun in Black Ops 2. Advanced Warfare tried really hard with the AMR9 and it was kind of better but kind of goofy and it never really panned out right. The Pharaoh is in burst SMG done right. It's competitive, it kills quickly, it has real recoil, it feels good, it competes at a lot of different ranges and I would highly recommend almost anyone using it. It's excellent up close, like it drops people faster up close than any weapon in the game, and it's surprisingly good at challenging AR users. You won't have an advantage when you challenge an assault rifle user, but it is doable. You can attempt it, it can work. However, it is a little bit weak at medium range. Most of the weapons in the game do slightly outclass it at medium range. At medium range, in order to be competitive, you're going to need to go for headshots, and you'll see me do that in most of these videos. Like when I feel somebody's too far away, I'm going to aim for the head and try and drop them a little bit faster. And I feel that this may well be the overall best submachine gun in in the game and I've said that a lot on in-depth I'm fine there's the SMGs are like super well balanced in this game but this is favored in competitive play as well I do see pros using the Pharaoh I see them using the Pharaoh very very effectively often just because the Vesper is banned but this is a good weapon it's a very competitive weapon I see a lot more people starting to use this online since they're getting a good feel with it but it does have a critical weakness and it's not just the time to kill at medium range and that's the fact that the burst fire part of it is just kind of awkward 
like if you miss your burst you do have to wait for the second one and if they're too far away and you have to double burst them or triple burst them it can kind of really slow down your time to kill and make it feel awkward or inconsistent so the really important thing to do with this weapon is to make sure your first shots have to hit your the first couple shots of your burst have to be on target you can't do the thing with other smgs where you start hip firing and then aim down sights this one is all aim down sights and then start firing make sure that you're firing accurately before you know you, you know, it's it's really important just just trust me on that don't do the hip fired ads just ads and then start firing it'll help you a ton and as for my class recommendation i'm going to do something that i don't often do here on in depth especially for black ops 3 because i haven't found it to be necessary but i feel like the pharaoh is better the more attachments i run on it and the less perks and other stuff i'm carrying the more effective i feel that this weapon is and when you level it up you should run it with long barrel that increases your three shot kill range your one burst range and it improves your medium range weakness a little bit quick draw grip so you can snap to target four grip will make your burst wobble a little bit less a little bit more consistent and optics make it run better so you're gonna i believe that's uh, so two primary gunfighters if i'm not mistaken and you can run all of these attachments and it will perform very very well for you just trust me this is a submachine gun to where instead of trying to figure out how what little attachments you can use just go ahead and stack all the attachments on it go ahead and put whatever it is that you want on there and it'll be fine and it'll perform very very well guys that is all for this in-depth episode i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you learned something useful if you did don't forget to like favorite and subscribe the previous episode was on the vesper smg and the next episode is going to be on fringe wall run spots i believe we're doing fringe wall run spots and then we're going to be talking a little bit about rapid fire and long barrel and some of the other attachments before i move on to the razorback drifter out